In this lesson we're going to be looking at how we can change the method of aggregation within our data. So we're going to be using our product and we're going to start off by just looking at what our sum of sales is for each of our products. So we have quite a number of different products in this data source. So I'm just going to pull down our sales. So now we have our sales for each of our products. Okay, we're just going to do our number format on our sum of sales. So what you'll see is when we pick a numeric field such as sales or cost of sales or profit is that Excel will automatically default to summing this or aggregating it by adding up all of the sales, the total sales. But what if we wanted to start asking some different questions of our data? Let's say for instance we were interested to know how many transactions had happened or what was the average sale or what was the highest amount that this product was sold for or what was the lowest amount that this product was sold for. So what we can use is different methods of aggregation. Now, depending on the different versions of Excel you've got, there's different ways of being able to access this, this method of changing things. So we're going to start off by looking at the field settings button that we looked at in the previous lesson. Uh, the field settings allows me to change the different method of summarizing our value. So you can see this is called summarize value field by. And over here we have the different methods of aggregation. As we go down this list, you'll see that those are also options in terms of our statistical analysis and in, in terms of standard deviations and variances. We're not going to look at those in this course. We're going to rather focus on the fact of our normal formulas that you would find that you would often use, say, in your Excel spreadsheets, such as count, average, max, and min. So those are all the basic ones we're going to focus on today. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to know what was the average selling price for this product. So what we could do in our Summarize Values field by is choose Average as our, our option over here. So I'm going to click OK. And now we can see what our average selling price was for each of our products. Let's say, for instance, we wanted to count the number of transactions in terms of each of these selling prices. So what we would want to do here is a count. Okay. Now another method that we can access these Summarize Values by is to use our right click. So a right click is a nice easy way of being able to being able to access this. Just make sure that your cell selector is on the correct field. So in this case it must be on your numeric field. So in this case we're going to now choose count as our option. So count now comes along and it now counts the number of transactions. Now please be aware that what Excel can do is count the number of rows, i.e. the number of transactions. In pivot tables in this version at the moment, we don't have what is called the distinct count function. However, if we start working with our Power Pivot or our data model, we do get a distinct count option that gives us a lot more flexibility in terms of counting the number of distinct entries within a list of data. So please, again, check out the Power Pivot training if you'd like to know more about distinct counts. Okay, so in this count case now we've got a count of our different number of cells. So this is great. This tells us the number of transactions. What if we wanted to know what was the highest amount that each one of these products were actually sold for? Now what we can do for that is actually use a function called the max function. So the max function will actually go through your data and it looks at a list of transactions and then it will pick out the highest individual entry. The min function will do the opposite. It will go through the list of transactions and then actually pick out the lowest individual transaction that has occurred against that product. So in this case we're going to use max. Now we can see the highest maximum selling price for each one of these products. And if I change this now to summarize values by, again I'm just using the right click. We can go to min. And now we see the lowest selling price for each of these products. So this is great. This starts to give us a quite a lot of different data or methods of being able to aggregate and summarize our data. So I'm going to change this back to our sum of sales. So we're going to summarize our values by and say sum here. So now we have our sum of sales. So this is, gives me my total sales. Now remember earlier I showed that we could change the active field name. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually change the sum of sales to a different name. Now another method that we can do this is actually just to go on to the header here. So the sum of sales here, and I'm going to just type in here total sales. I'm going to press enter. So now we have the total sales against each of our items. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a, another copy of my sales and I'm actually going to drag it down into my sales values. So now I have two copies of my sales. So I've got total sales which I just renamed and now another one sum of sales. So again now I'm just going to do a quick number format just so we and find our numbers a little bit easier to read. 
Now let's say for instance I want to see the average sales here. So I'm going to right click, choose my summarized values by, and let's say average. And again I can rename this if I would like to. I'm going to call this average sales. Okay, let's say, see now I want to see the number of transactions that have occurred. Again, I can take my sales and I can drag it down. And now I'm going to do a count. So again, I'm going to click now this number three. So you can see I'm using the same field multiple different times now for different methods of calculations. So I'm going to say this is count and I'm going to say, okay, number of transactions. And to finish this off, let's do a max and a min. So again, I'm going to drag this down to the bottom. So let's do a quick number format. And summarize values by. I'm going to put max now. So this is the maximum selling price. So we can just call this max sales. And then we want the minimum selling price. So let's drop this down again. And again, we're going to right click. And we're going to look at our min. Okay, so now we have the lowest selling price over here. So we can start to see quite a lot of different transactions here. So we start to get our average selling price, we can see the number of transactions, what was the maximum that it was sold for, what was the minimum that it was sold for. Now if you are interested in looking at data in more detail, say for instance you wanted to drill down on a particular transaction. Now we have the max sales over here, let's double click. And you'll see now all the transactions that relate to this query are now being shown. So over here now we have all the different for this bike wash. Now there should be about 416 transactions according to the list. So if we go down to the bottom here, and you'll see, yes, it's around 416, the total is 420, but remember this does not start on the first row. And you'll see that this has been placed in another sheet, another sheet number over here. So this allows us now to drill down into our transactions by double clicking on any of those cells. And again, now if I wanted to see the min and max, I can actually just use my normal table functions and can say sort smallest to largest. And you can see that sales of 795 was my lowest. And if I sort largest to high, there's my highest one, 198. So let's go back to my sheet one, which is my pivot table. And you see my max sale was 199 and the min 795. So as we can see, this is quite nice functionality to be able to start working with in terms of understanding different different types of transactions. Okay, so this concludes the lesson. So in this lesson we've learned that we can change our method of summary. If you're using Excel 2010 or 2013, I would suggest that you use the right-click method to change your summarized values by. If you're using Excel 2007, you'll probably use the field settings button to be able to change it.